In the broadest sense, pyrotechnics refers to the science and the craft of creating self-sustained, self-contained exothermic reactions. Pyrotechnic devices find widespread use in a variety of industrial applications, including mining, quarrying, automotive airbags, safety matches, and general mining. Aside from that, the more recognizable use of pyrotechnics is for entertainment, and are generally separated into two major categories, display pyrotechnics and proximate pyrotechnics. Display pyrotechnics are more commonly called fireworks, and are generally designed for outdoor use where the audience can be far away from the violent chemical reaction. Proximate pyrotechnics, on the other hand, tend to be smaller and more controlled, which allows them to be used much closer to audiences. These include the colorful flashes, smoke, flames, and bursts that tend to find use in things like concerts. Today I'm going to show you the general idea behind how pyrotechnics work at the simplest level, and maybe if there's enough interest, I could get a bit more creative with it in the future. On that note, the simplest pyrotechnics are called binary powders. These typically come in kits containing a fuel and an oxidizer that are stored separately and mixed just before use. Oxidizers are most typically nitrates or perchlorates, and their role is not only to provide oxygen to the reaction, but also color. The oxidizer I decided to use for this demo is called sodium bromate, which I'm going to use to make a variety of different colored flames starting with green and blue. To get started, I first added 4.16 grams of barium chloride and 4.2 grams of cesium chloride to two separate beakers. Barium salts burn with a bright green flame and cesium salts burn with a bright violet flame. The issue though is that chloride salts can't provide oxygen, so I needed to make them into their bromate salts. To do this, I simply dissolved them in a minimum volume of distilled water along with a molar equivalent of sodium bromate, which is dissolved in a separate beaker. For my 4.16 grams of barium chloride, this corresponds to 6.04 grams of sodium bromate. And for my 4.2 grams of cesium chloride, I would need 3.8 grams of sodium bromate. Once all four salt samples were nice and dissolved, I next poured my cesium chloride solution into its corresponding bromate solution, which immediately resulted in a dense precipitate of the barely soluble cesium bromate. I repeated this with the barium chloride to precipitate barium bromate. Now, producing these two bromate salts by precipitation is not simply done to obtain oxidizing agents capable of producing color. The action of precipitation itself here is critical. This is because when salts are formed by precipitation, they're formed as ultrafine particles. These ultrafine particles provide maximum surface area in the final pyrotechnic mixture, which produces a much faster and more spectacular reaction that really isn't possible otherwise. To collect my salts, I simply passed each one through vacuum filtration before thoroughly rinsing each one first with cold water to remove any residual sodium chloride, and then cold isopropyl alcohol to speed up the drying process. I then scoop each of the two salts onto a couple watch glasses and allow them to sit overnight to dry completely. When I came back the next day, I was greeted with two nearly identical powders which I then weighed for a final cesium bromate mass of 5.55 grams representing an 85.4% yield and a final barium bromate mass of 7.78 grams representing a 99% yield. These type of reactions should be nearly 100% efficient and I blame the lower efficiency of my cesium salt on the fact that cesium chloride is very hygroscopic and since I didn't dry it beforehand, I likely didn't start with a full 4.2 grams. I also just noticed that bromine and barium are the two elements used in the Breaking Bad title card, which also uses a green backdrop, which is a fun little coincidence. Anyway, with this, my oxidizers were complete, and now all that I needed was a fuel source. Pyrotechnic fuels are pretty flexible and can honestly be anything capable of being oxidized. Fuels such as charcoal, aluminum, or iron can also provide color of their own, while sulfur only burns a faint blue. Since I want to try to isolate the color of my salts here, I decided to use sulfur as my fuel, which is simply mixed with my bromate salts in a 1 to 5 ratio. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I now had two binary pyrotechnic powders I was ready to try out. To that end, I took a very, very small scoop of powder and held it to the Bunsen burner, which immediately resulted in a dazzlingly colorful burst of flame. The only issue here is that this reaction only lasted a fraction of a second, 
and my camera is only capable of shooting at 60 frames per second. Because of this, the reaction only appeared on 3 frames of footage, meaning it was over in 1 20th of a second, which felt like a bit of a tease. To remedy this, I decided to film the rest of my shots on my phone camera, which can record at 960 frames per second. Doing it this way isn't ideal from a quality or aspect ratio perspective, but it made it possible to actually see the reaction happen. I've got some more footage I'll show at the end of the video, but for now I wanted to show one more way to make this reaction a bit more colorful. Now, I can't really make any other bromate salts, as very few are so insoluble that they can be precipitated the way I showed earlier. However, I can add a bit of another salt capable of producing color when it burns into the mixture. The first I decided to try was mixing a small amount of copper chloride into the cesium bromate mixture to try and boost the intensity of the blue flame. This did actually work remarkably well, and also produced a bit of green flame as well. The second one I decided to try was mixing a bit of strontium bromide into the cesium bromate mixture to create a red flame. The idea here was that compared to the barium flame, I felt like the cesium flame was very subdued and could be easily overpowered by any other color I wanted to mix in. This also did work, but the intensity of the reaction was somewhat diminished as I think I added a bit too much of the strontium salt relative to how much cesium bromate I had left. Lastly, I decided to try moving on from the salts I had made and tried using straight sodium bromate ground as finely as possible in a mortar and pestle and mixed with sulfur in the same ratio from earlier. This produced an intense yellow flame typical of sodium, but it didn't result in a pyrotechnic flash due to the larger particle size. I also briefly tried potassium chlorate, which produced a lovely lilac color but lacked the intensity of the bromate salts, again because of the larger particle size. In any case, that's pretty much all I've got for today. It's somewhat tough to expand upon this topic of pyrotechnics without the video inevitably being taken down, but one thing I can try if there's any interest are some DIY sparklers. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting, and as always, I want to thank all my incredible patrons for their generous contributions. Your support is vital and very appreciated. To everyone else, if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, or even by becoming a patron yourself. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.